Hey everybody and welcome back to Investment Honey where we talk about various crypto projects. Before we begin, I want to let you know that I'm not your financial advisor. I do not provide financial advice on this channel and I'm not even encouraging you to invest. But what I am going to do is just share with you my own personal opinion and view on uh, the crypto project that we'll be discussing in this episode. So let's get into Radio Shack. Radio Shack, some of you um, may or may not be familiar you know, with Radio Shack. It just really depends on when you were born. So it is a company that's been around for a long time. Uh, it, it, it started out strong, but uh, it, it kind of just fizzled out. It used to be a billion dollar company, and I think it, it's, at one point it got sold you know, for um, for a whole lot less, you know, than what it was and what it was worth. So, um, you know, with that said, they are trying to um, jump into crypto. Uh, they've got a new owner. The owner is Ty Lopez. Um, as far as I'm concerned, this is going to be one of those projects where I'm going to let you know straight up front that I've got concerns about the project. Um, you know, there are red flags for me. One, Ty Lopez is not a trusted name. Um, I think, you know, when it comes to, you know, just crypto, nobody really knows who he is in, in crypto. I mean, he doesn't really have history in crypto. So when I say it's not a trusted name, I mean, I'm, it's not me trying to knock him at all. It's just me saying that, I mean, there's no trust, you know, real estate, you know, with him in crypto. Um, you know, so that's kind of where the concern starts for me, you know, there. Yes, he owns this company. He owns Radio Shack. He is the new owner, um, you know, but to bridge Radio Shack, that is a very, very old, old brand and company into crypto. I mean, that is a, that's a huge order. It's an extremely tall order. And I don't know that I've seen enough, you know, in terms of looking around this, this website to really feel like um, there is a real plan, a real substantive plan um, to make this project a success. So, that's the concern for me, you know, just as we begin, um, you know, as I, as I, you know, kind of take my walk through in regards to this project. So again, I just want to clarify, it's not a knock on tie. It's just me basically just giving you again, my own opinion that there isn't enough trust, you know, behind the name in crypto for me to feel confident, you know, about, um, you know, what they are aiming to do. In regards to this project so let's start here the mission is to become the first protocol to bridge the gap to mainstream usage of DeFi, and they want to bring cryptocurrency to the mainstream now here's another thing for me everybody is trying to bridge you know or bring crypto into the mainstream and guess what I mean it's it's not an easy thing to do um, you know, but we've certainly, you know, I've certainly seen much more substance with a lot of other projects, you know, in terms of, you know, the steps to try to get there. So, um, you know, just moving into, you know, uh, further down into the website, um, they are saying that they are brand embedded uh, into the global consciousness. Again, even when I read this, one thing that comes to mind is it depends on when you're born. Like you may or may not know what Radio Shack is. I'm sure that if you walk down the street and you talk to somebody, you, most people probably, you know, especially if you're talking to the younger group, um, they're probably not going to know what Radio Shack is. You know, but you talk to the older generation, the older group, you're prob they're probably going to know, right? Um, they talk about the challenge, you know, here, um, you know, the generate, there's a generational gap between the average crypto buyer and the average business decision maker. It really depends on how do you define what is the average business decision maker. I mean, there's a lot of people making business decisions, you know, that are into crypto and they're of a, you know, younger a generation as well. You know, so I don't know if this is a, a fair statement either. And I don't want to go ahead and just, you know, armchair quarterback, you know, this whole web page and, um, and nitpick or anything. But again, um, I'm not sure that I agree with this statement. So. Demographic difference between, uh, creates a substantial psychological barrier to crypto adoption. Again, I don't, I don't know uh, if I necessarily agree with it or not, but they're going to bridge the, um, uh, they're, they'll, they're, they're aiming to be the bridge between the CEOs who lead the world's uh, corporations and the new world of cryptocurrencies. Okay. How are they going to uh, make this bridge? Uh, they're going to go ahead and do it through a token swap. This is another thing that kind of sticks out to me that I'm not really sure that I agree with. I mean, Everybody's doing token swaps. I mean, every time you look around in crypto, there's there's a, there's a 
every project, you know, that's it's on their roadmap, you know, they want to go, not every project, you know, but you know what I mean. I mean, there's a lot of projects they want to go and do swaps. Is that enough to say that, you know, hey, you're going to be the difference. You're going to be the one to go ahead and lead us, you know, ahead in, you know, in, 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 in the space in crypto, um, bridging that gap through a token swap. I, I can't get there. You know, I'm not sure that I that I believe that that is the the way to do it. Do I agree that it's the lowest hanging fruit among many DeFi opportunities? Absolutely, because like I said, a lot of projects go ahead and do the swaps, um, and they build those swaps. So, so yeah, that's just my take on that. Um, talk about you know why they're partnering with Atlas USV. Um, you know, even looking at Atlas USV, I that is not a a, a real recognizable you know name um, in crypto. Not really sure what USV Atlas is. I believe it's probably something that Ty you know has partnerships with. So I'm just being upfront about that. The other thing that I that when I look at the partners, I know that Ty Lopez owns Pure One. I know that he owns Dress Barn. I don't know why you would list companies that you own and then state that they're partners. So again, just trying to you know put things out there to pass the smell test in terms of transparency and you know in crypto transparency kind of matters. You know you want to build trust you know with um, with people that are looking at your projects. And so to list projects that you already own, and there's a good chance that he might even own all of these, but I know for sure that he owns these two, so um, I don't even know why these two are here. You know, when they're partners, or and when you're calling them partners, when you already own them. So the transparent, what would what would be more helpful for me is if you just come out and state that you know, hey, yeah, I own these two. You know, and you're listing you're, you're listing people that are partners and collaborators that truly you know aren't necessarily affiliated with you. You know, but want to um, you know collaborate and, and be a partner with you on. A project that you're doing that they're not that they weren't already connected to prior you know to engaging in that conversation so so yeah that's those are just concerns that I have in terms of uh, what I've seen here on the first page or on the front page um, I'm gonna go back here real quick on the store I'm not gonna go ahead and list the store just you know um, it's not really necessary the other thing you know before I even before I even move on from this page is that when you look at these two stores, and I'm looking at really even all of this, um, Steinmart, I'm looking at Linen and things, and I'm thinking, where's the connection to crypto? Where's the connection? How is this supposed to help crypto out? You know, like, what's the game plan here? Um, I, I, I see no connection at all. Um, you know, so again, just another, another concern for me, you know, as to, you know, why I'm struggling to see how they're going to do what they need to do. Um, they've got a video here, you know, as well on the site. Not really going to go into it. I do like the video, though. Um, you know, let's see here. And then they've got a number of different things, you know, here listed, you know, in their, in their documents. And I'm not going to go through all of it. Um, you know, there are just some projects where it isn't necessary for me. I don't believe, you know, to go into, you know, several different aspects of it especially when there just seem to be some bigger, um, you know, footprints, you know, for me in the sand that are just really kind of concerning. So um, I'm just not seeing how Radio Shack, Radio Shack is going to, is going to get to, you know, being the first protocol to bridge the gap to mainstream usage of DeFi. That is a very, very tall order. They don't have the real estate, you know, background in crypto to be able to do this, in my opinion. Um, you know, and, and I just, based on some of the other things that I've seen, you know, already just here on the first page, I'm not seeing the resources. I'm not seeing the connections. I'm having a real big issue, you know, with, um, not being transparent about owning some of the companies and calling them partners and collaborators. So I'm not really going to go into much more in terms of this project, but I wanted to just bring it to your attention for anybody that thinks that, you know, Hey, Hey, it's cool. You know, Radio Shack's coming into crypto. There are some things that you that, that just don't pass the smell test for me um, on this project. And so uh, this this episode really is just about highlighting the concern 
and the red flags for me uh, in terms of why I don't think that this is um, this is this is a project that um, you know that you may want to look at you know seriously. So I could be wrong. You know, there's always a chance that you know that I could be wrong. You know, but when you see enough projects, um, there are projects that just pass the smell test and you know all the elements just come together you know for you and this is not one of them for me unfortunately so with that said uh, if you like the content that i'm releasing on the channel uh, by all means please subscribe and um, turn on those notifications i'll be releasing more content in the coming days i'll be you know sharing the links you know obviously for radio shack you know in uh, in their di in their discord in the description below so that way if you want to take a deeper dive into it you're more than welcome but i didn't want to um you know go into this too much because like i said i've seen enough projects where i don't need a whole lot to let me know that it's probably in terms of just the long-term picture of it um that it, it may not work out you know for those looking into it but you know it's nothing's guaranteed i could be wrong but i'm not sure that i am wrong on this one all right, thanks so much. You guys enjoy the day.